These videos provide general information. They are not intended to replace consultations with a health care professional or to provide medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Seek the advice of a physician or other qualified health care provider for particular concerns you may have. Never disregard professional health care advice or delay in seeking it because of the information on these videos. Hi, this is Joe Rosen. We are pleased to bring the California Telephone Access Program video lecture to you to show you yet another resource that may be available to you. If you have a similar program in your state, please let us at Parkinson's Resource Organization know so that we can spread the word. Thank you and enjoy the lecture. seconds to dial the correct number. This one will show you the numbers 
before it even dials. If you get one number wrong, you don't have to erase the whole thing. You can just back up one number. Until you get the number correct, you look at it, you compare, and then you push dial, and it'll dial for you. Some of you are, hmm, interesting. <laughs> this one will also repeat the number. So if you're not sure what number you pushed, you push it, it says three. You push it, it says five. Andy? Some of them will have a speaker phone, which can be helpful if you want to use both ears. How many of you had a good ear and not such a good ear? You have to answer with one ear or the other. When you're on a speaker phone, you get to use both ears, which can help, obviously help you hear better. But there's some studies that show it will help comprehension if you get to use both ears. Going in, yeah? You've heard that before? Okay. Um, what about the uh, microphone though? It's the quality that's coming back on a speaker phone the same quality as a handset. Good question. Were you an engineer? <laughs> a shot. Most engineers will ask me, is this dual duplex or single duplex? Well, um, yeah. The engineers think that's funny. <laughs> I'm a granddaughter of an engineer. I think it's funny. One of the occasional uh, symptoms of Parkinson's is that you don't. Yes, I'll get to that. And nothing on that phone talks about the whole voices for me, unless you have the amplifier. I do. I'm getting one? to that. It Duplex is. Single duplex? I'm getting to that. I'll get that. I promise. <coughs> Speaker phone. When you use a speaker phone, you want to make sure that you're in a quiet room, as quiet as possible, and the other person hopefully isn't going down the freeway with the top down and the radio going. That can be helpful. But using a speaker phone, it does take a little bit of um, you know, patience. You want to make sure it's quiet, but the, the speaker is really good. You talked about having a low voice. Um, a lot of our phones do have the feature of amplifying your outgoing voice, and they will actually amplify it to about 30 decibels, which is pretty significant. So you might be on the phone and you start out strong and the other person says, can you speak up? Instead of saying, no, I really can't, you just flip the other switch. This might be go hard. You can go as you need to, otherwise stay. But your detention is over. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so that's been six minutes. Anybody falling asleep? Your um, speaker phone. Amplifying your outgoing voice. We can do that. There's also, if you have a really, really weak voice, we can. Um, we have a little microphone that we'll clip on and amplify your outgoing voice. But we do have um, picture phones. My, my grandmother, when she was um, having dementia in, in her later years, it actually was a lot of fun. You don't think dementia is fun. You never met my grandmother. She would call the fire department on a regular basis. Every time my grandfather left the house, she lived across the street from me, and I would see the firemen pull up, you know. Oh, well, house is not on fire. She just wanted some company. She would say, you know, the nice young men will come and visit when your grandma's sleeps, and aren't they cute? <laughs> Are you still single? We can double date. Yeah. So the, the nice fireman said to me on the third call, they said, you know, you really need to take her phone away. She's not using it in a socially appropriate manner. And I totally agreed with him, but I said, I'm not taking it away. Here's what we're going to do. We got her a picture phone because she had some cognitive problems. That's on our list. We gave her the picture phone. We put in pictures of people that she liked to die. And every night at 7, when Wheel of Fortune would come on, it was her time to call everybody. Because she did that with me in college. I went away to college. She said she wanted to watch Wheel of Fortune. I think she wanted to make sure I was home. <laughs> so she would call me and we'd watch Wheel of Fortune together. So she started calling me. And she'd say, I don't know who you are, but you look nice. Let's watch Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> I'd say, OK. Halfway through, she knew every puzzle. And then she would just stop and say, who is this? I'd say, it's Andy. And she says, well, I don't know who you are. But you look nice, let's watch me a little bit. So, a picture phone. If you think that you cannot use the phone anymore for whatever reason, my uncle used to get a concussion, he would say. He kept whacking himself in the head. <laughs> That's funny for those of you who whacked yourself in the head. He'd be on the phone, his medication would wear off, and all of a sudden. So I said, hit the speaker button quick before it really kicks in. You know, he'd say, okay. Instead of, I can't use the phone right now. If he can hit that speaker button, you know, sometimes it took him three tries, whoosh, go at it. Hit the speaker phone, he can still use it, and off he goes, you know. Um, a headset would come in handy, too. So if you think you can't use the phone anymore because people can't hear you, or you can't hear them, or you don't 
don't remember who you're calling, uh, we can help. And I think something important on that particular phone is that when we have the pictures on that um, left side, mm -hmm. um, the numbers are still there and that could distract someone with dementia. Mm -hmm. So those numbers can actually be covered so that they're not usable, so That's that the did. person is only working oh. with the, the pictures. Yeah. Okay. What, we, what we also did is we, we stayed close by and it was between 7 and 8 every night. We would bring the phone, she would use it. Most of the time, you know, she never even asked about the numbers. She would just, she thought the pictures were great, and then we would take it again. And obviously, after that, we didn't leave her alone. But, um, but yeah, it can be adapted. So, you know, if, if the numbers are, this is for someone with a brain injury or or a stroke. Even if you think about dyslexia, if you had dyslexia, would you dial a phone? I mean, something as simple as dialing a phone. You could do speed dials instead. And the last one I'll show you. These cordless phones. These are not cellular, they don't go in the car with you, but they are for around your house. Anybody not have a cordless phone anymore? You don't? Magical. You're about the only person in, maybe in the zip code. Um, <laughs> cordless phones are great because answering the phone is not an Olympic sport. <laughs> Anybody admit to tripping and falling while trying to answer the phone? I did. I tripped over my shoe. My shoe was securely tied to my foot at the time I tripped over it. It's just what I do, tripping ninja. Anybody can have a trip and fall. We don't like to talk about it because, you know, it's one of those things. We don't like to think about tripping and falling. But you got here to this meeting tonight. You want to make it next month. Make sure that when your phone rings, you are within a safe distance of answering it. That's why a cordless phone can be great. You carry it around with you. You get out your front yard, your backyard. You always have the phone. Okay. Something as simple as a cold medicine can make you dizzy when you get up to answer the phone. So think about that. The cordless phones are great. Bigger numbers, speaker phone on the back, and obviously you carry it with you. Okay. So that's good to have. And how far how far away from the um, can it go? Well, that depends. Okay. Depends on whether you read the instructions or not. Anybody like to read instructions? No. No? I love to read instructions. I like to highlight them. I read every word. I never really get anybody joining me on that. You think I'm kidding? Go look at my bedside table. It's full of instructions. I keep a binder. I laminate them. But I understand I'm unique in that. Here's a good point. If you have one of our phones and you say, you know, I got this phone, but it might as well have a cord on it because I get eight feet away from it and I get static. It starts to cut out. If you call our 800 number, which will be on your phone, there's always a sticker with our phone number on it. They'll find the model number that you have by asking your name and phone number. They'll say, oh, you have the XLC2. Here's what you have to do to increase the, the range. With these phones, they're shipped from the manufacturer not knowing where they're going to live, and they're preset to a certain channel. It's like taking the bunny ears if you wanted to watch a different channel, you had to adjust, you know, for the channel. It'll tell you in the instructions, or you call our 800 number, it will tell you how to adjust the channel for where you live. You only have to do that once. You could probably do it on the, the cordless phones you have at home. And it dramatically will increase the range sometimes. So, if you have a normal size home, you should be able to get out your front door, your back door, go get your, your mail at the front porch. Um, in my grandfather's case, he, when we, after we tuned the channel, he got two doors down and across the street to my house and his phone would still ring. So I would call him and he'd say, oh, I'm coming right over and he would keep talking. We, well, he'd be in my kitchen, he'd still be talking to me on the phone. I'd say, you can hang up now. And I'd say, oh. And then he'd forget his phone and it would ring later on my kitchen table. But he could get really far with it, okay? So you can increase increase the range. If you're, why are you up? They're clapping again. Um, if you if you you know you it used to ring, and all of a sudden it stopped ringing, and you don't know why, call our 800 number. There's just a little. Usually it just got moved, and there's something that got pushed here, okay? So not only do you get a phone from us, we want to make sure that you're able to use it, uh, that it works well for you, that if we need to fix it or exchange it, we can, okay? 
Any questions about the equipment itself? Before I tell you again, yes, sir. Uh, two two questions. One is security of uh, your neighbor being listening in on your wireless line, and two, how long does the battery last on wireless for one conversation before it needs to be recharged? Well, you can talk for 17 continuous hours if the battery is fully charged. No, 18 continuous hours. I only got to 17. I ran out of things to say. But if you want to test it, you know, make an appointment, give me a call, we'll try it again. Um, if the battery is properly charged, when you first get these, these phones home, you want to make sure you plug it in and leave it alone for about eight hours. If you properly charge the batteries the first time, you can take it off the base as much as you want. When the little batter, low battery light goes on, you recharge it. We just say overnight. Or if you happen to keep it with you at night in your bedroom and you need to charge it during the day, if you don't have a plug in your bedroom, that's fine. Um, and then they should last you a good four years. If the batteries ever wear out, you don't need to go and get new batteries. Call our 800 number, we'll send you some new batteries. And your other question? Security, um, security on the line. I haven't heard of, um, of anybody complaining about that, no. I, I think, um, unless you're wanted by someone and they sit out in front of your house with a big dish. I don't think I'd worry too much. There, there's something, of, I've lost track of the gigahertz and her, megahertz thing. Uh, supposedly the last big change took care of all of that because you can't be on the same channel as your neighbor. If you even, uh, it, it just I don't think can happen anymore, it would go to static instead. So there isn't any, any more of that. Any other questions? Yes. How many of those can you get? How I'm thinking of the yeah. house. In our house, we have phones in the bedroom. Okay, we will. Six? You have six? You want more? <laughs> no, I don't know if you're being quiet because that's. Or if you're being basement. quiet so she can't hear you. Sorry. Okay. You haven't beat the gentleman from the Parkinson's group who had 13. Wow. He's in. Um, uh, Newport, Newport Beach, upstairs. He had 13, and he says, my phones don't work all that well. Now, if you have six different phones plugged into six phone jacks, um, if you keep installing jacks, it's possible that your phones won't work to their full extent, because it's like an electrical system. You might be overloading it a little. Mm -hmm. um, Unless it says six deck phone. Okay, that, that could be. We will issue one phone per person, not per household, but per person. So if you already have you know, six phones, you could replace one of the phones you have, or you could just get another jack and keep going. If you need the amplification on the phone, and you plug it in and it's not very loud, and you have six or eight or 13 jacks, I would suggest unplug a few and see if the quality improves. If you keep plugging in phones because you can't hear them very well, you're probably defeating the purpose a little bit. So yes, that's sir. one per person. Yes. And and that's only in the state of California. And you cannot take it with you. If you try to leave the state of California, it will self-destruct. <laughs> <laughs> this half is still awake. This half is still You can't leave. No. You, uh, it is a state of California program. So we would ask you to return it if you try to leave the state. Otherwise, we will hunt you down. There's a whole division for that. <laughs>